Sunday morning worship service. Yes, this was uh, pre-recorded yesterday. Um, and uh, so we're just uh, so excited. Amen. Um, just be a part of the worship service. I'm going to just uh, not use a microphone because uh, some people said that the microphone causes it to be a little echoey. So um, I'm just going to speak really loud. Praise God. And um, just pray for my voice. Um, above all, just pray to the Holy Spirit as he always does, takes over. We're just a mouthpiece, amen? He's our teacher. And uh, if you're wondering what these tables are, everything's going to come together. Uh, just uh, just set this up because Holy Spirit wanted this up here. And uh, glory to God, I'm excited. Are you? Praise God. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Amen. <laughs> so please, beloved church family, pray for me. I pray that uh, you're staying warm, that you're safe, that everyone is Blessed in the overflow. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. God is head over heels in love with us. Amen. Oh my goodness. He's coming soon and he loves you. He's head over heels in love with you. And I, I just pray that right now that you're just, uh, either you're by yourself or with your family, wherever you are, that his anointing, his presence, his breath. Hallelujah. His presence is overflowing mightily through you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for all of eternity, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you saved us, that you forgave us. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are perfect and you're the only one worthy. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are the true, one and only, the only way, truth, and life is you, Lord Jesus Christ. That you are the truth of how much God loves us. You are the word of God, and Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. Father, as we plead your holy and precious blood right now over this worship service, Father God, we thank you. We thank you that your spirit, your breath is in every beloved child of Lord Jesus Christ. And Father God, I pray for those that are running away, Father God. I pray for those, Father God, who fell away. I pray for those, Father God, that, 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 are, that are just in darkness right now. That I pray, Heavenly Father, that your light, your presence would shine through them, Father. Father, we love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, Father. We thank you so much, Father God, for loving us. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. And it's in Jesus Christ's name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. All the time. It just keeps getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen. Our worship service this morning is titled... You probably saw it on Facebook and on YouTube. Stuck between a rock and a hard place. Stuck between a rock and a hard place. Have you been there? Yeah. There's some of us right now that's going through it. Amen. And I pray that I pray that this message from Holy Spirit will bless us with life-changing conviction. Remember, it's His presence in us that convicts us to tell us to repent. Right? To repent. Come back. Amen. Say it with me. Come back. And I pray that Holy Spirit's conviction would will, will, will just shine through our hearts for those of us right now that is struggling through an in-between season. The funny thing is, I didn't know how to say this and I had to ask Trish. And Trish goes, that's how you say it. Stuck between a rock and a hard place. And praise God, that was the message. That was the message title for, for this morning. And when I, when I talk about this, as you can see, the, the, the letters turn into this picture right here. And I think this picture speaks volumes, amen? This picture speaks volumes because here you have two separate places, but then there's that rock in between those two places, right? And so as we continue on, I want to tell you the story real quick. If you don't see these pictures and... And I'll make sure that we have the pictures on our website or on, on, uh, on Facebook. However, when, when you look at this picture, this is the picture of the Tijuana border in San Diego, California. And that's why you have the Mexican flag right there. Right there on the bottom, that's Mexico. And right there on the top is America. Amen? And right there, as you saw in green, that is the border. And you could just see all those cars right there. Now, it's been, oh my goodness, it's been 20 years now. It's been 20 years now, Trish and I, I had, a, I had a great idea at the time 
that I wanted to take her to Tijuana, Mexico. And, <laughs> and we parked on the state side. We parked in the America side, right? America. Say it with me, this is America, right? We parked in America. And we walked across the border. Uh, yeah. Uh, we weren't saved back then. Obviously, you can tell the proof. So we walked across the border. And when we walked in there, immediately we knew that we were foreigners, right? That we were foreigners. In the, it's a foreign country, right? And so I just wanted to drive that home as far as the, the, the magnitude as far as having this border. Can you say that with me? Border. Because see, this, this border that differentiates the United States of America, right? That I'm a citizen of. Amen. I'm a citizen of the United States of America. Praise God. But here Trish and I are walking into this foreign land, right? As a foreign, because we're, we're not citizens of that place. And uh, to, make, to make the long story short, there's so much I can tell you about what we did that day. But um, the funniest thing about that day is uh, we thought it'd be really nice to, to buy these big uh, piggy banks. These big ceramic piggy banks. But remember, we walked, and so we bought them because you could buy things. You know, it, it, everything's pretty in, inexpensive there in Tijuana. So she bought one, and I bought one, and and um, and then it, it was time to go home. And all we did was go, you know, walk around, and we ate some tacos. Obviously, we ate some tacos, and you know, just had a good time. But when it was time to go back, she was holding this big piggy bank, and I was holding this big piggy bank. And the walk was so far, we rented bicycles. And uh, you saw that red arrow that popped up. We had to ride our bicycles on that, on, that, uh, <laughs> on that walkway there. And oh my goodness, it's only, even though we weren't saved back then, it's only by the grace of God that we were saved. It's only by the grace of God they let me back into the country. Can I tell you? Looking like this, oh, Trish will tell you. They held, us, they held us there for a while. But praise God that I had my, 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 my ID and um, they had to look up because, of course, they look at me, right? They had to look things up in the computer and, and I have a social security number. Hallelujah. And that proves my citizenship in America. <laughs> Again, amen. Hallelujah. And, um, yeah, so it was such a wonderful experience. I mean, um, Glory to God, we did it, and uh, unless the Lord Jesus says so, we'll do it again, but uh, and we have no plans to do that, but praise God, it's not our plans, it's his plans, amen? So once again, we say all this to talk about this borderline, or what borderline, or what we like to say border. Our scripture that we're going to be in is in the, in the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. And, that, and that's where we're going to stay. Praise God. Amen. I pray that you're ready. Hallelujah. I miss you guys so much. Praise God. I'm so excited. Amen. Listen, we're one in spirit. It doesn't matter where we're all at physically. Hallelujah. We're all worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ umpteen times a day. Amen. And just be encouraged that as you call out on the name of the Lord Jesus, as you bless them and you're thankful. Amen. You're surrounded by brothers and sisters that are doing the same thing all throughout this fallen world. And above all, Holy Spirit. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's presence in you, in me, is just overflowing mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that his light shines through us like never before. Praise God. Let's get started. Amen. In Luke 17, verse 11, says this. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. Now here, Lord Jesus Christ is walking in the border, right? If, if this is two separate, praise God for this, amen? Show and tell, hallelujah. If this is two separate, right? You know, you, you have the foreign land and you have homeland. I'm a citizen here and this is a foreign land. He was just walking, right? He was just walking along the border, right? Praise God. And I love this picture of Galilee. As you know, Lord Jesus Christ is a Galilean, right? This is his hometown. Say that with me, hometown, amen? There's many brothers and sisters that I have here in Lebanon that they were born here. This is your hometown, right? And I love this because it just shows this beautiful picture 
of Galilee. Now remember, when we talk about Galilee, Lord Jesus Christ did a bunch of his miracles in Galilee, right? We're talking about as far as, you know, with his disciples, right? As far as, you know, throw your net and uh, calming the storm, right? He calmed the storm, right? He, he uh, walked on water, right? Reached down, saved Peter, amen? He, he fed, you know, my goodness, it's, it's over 10,000 people at 10,000 souls, right? With, with, the, with the fish fillet o meal, right? I, he, he did all these, and this was all in Galilee. So it just gives you the heart as far as what Galilee means as we go into this worship service. And our Holy Spirit, say his name, he's the only teacher, Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen, it's, it's never anybody who's preaching. It's all Holy Spirit. I, I beg you, just look through me. Even the words that I speak, just give it all to the Lord and let his anointing just bless you. Let his presence bless you. Amen. I know he will. Hallelujah. God is good. He's perfect. He's kind. He's merciful. Father God just wants to bless your socks off. Amen. So now let's go ahead and look at this foreign land, Samaria. There's a little snapshot of what Samaria looks like. Amen. So Lord Jesus Christ was traveling through on, along the border of these two areas. Right? And now we're going to get into the story of what took place. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. And they stood at a distance. Now there's a couple things to note as we talk about this real quickly now. In Greek, this word leprosy is lepra. However, in Greek, this word lepra covers all, all, can you say it with me? Every, every skin disease. Every one of them. It doesn't exclude anything. See, this translation is translated as leprosy from lepra, but now people think that, well, that's just that one condition. No, no, the original, original meaning was every. Every, every skin disease. Every, every, right? Can you say every disease? Amen? Every. And so check this out. They stood at a distance. Now, what we have to understand quickly is that back then, when you had this kind of disease, whatever kind of disease it was, you were outcasted, right? You were a foreigner, wanting nothing to do with you, right? That became your identity, that's who you are. We want, you were shunned. We want nothing to do with you, you were outcasted. And even these souls, these 10 souls, they stood at a distance because they know that I don't wanna, I don't wanna be beat to death for approaching a Galilean, right? I don't want to be, I don't want to get in any trouble. So they stood at a distance, but they knew who was coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They knew who was coming. Amen. And glory to God. Don't you love it? That as, as God right now is just grabbing onto your heart and blessing you with this message, God lives where? Right in you and in me. Amen. God lives in us. Hallelujah. And glory to God. I'm just so thankful for Holy Spirit's anointing. That wherever we set our hearts to go, that his presence will go before us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It gets gooder and gooder. Amen. And they called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And you could just see this right here. And I just, I love this picture. It's one of my pictures at home. And here in verse 14, Luke 17 says this. When he saw them, when Lord Jesus Christ saw them, praise God that Lord Jesus Christ, he is the seesaw grandmaster champion, amen? Remember seesaw champion, right? Remember seesaw champion, right? What do you see, amen? Do, what you see, does it trump over what you saw, right? If you say you're focused on agape, that means no matter what distractions this world throws at you, you're not going to saw that. Right? You're not going to saw that because you see Jesus. Amen? And don't you love this? When Lord Jesus Christ saw them, he said, what do you think Lord Jesus Christ said to them? Huh? I know many of you have your Bibles open. You already know the answer. Praise God. Did Lord Jesus Christ say, oh, what kind of sins did you guys commit? Huh? Did Lord Jesus Christ judge them for the condition they're in? Did Lord Jesus Christ condemn them for what is what what? What is happening to their physical bodies or their spiritual well-being? No, this is what Lord Jesus Christ had to say. Go! Hallelujah. Can you say that with me? Go! 
And I love this part because when you know that God said go, right? When you know Holy Spirit's knocking on your heart, I pray this for all of eternity. However long Father God has this video, has this recording playing, I pray that you're that one soul right now that you hear Holy Spirit. You hear God Almighty knocking on the door of your heart saying, open your door to Lord Jesus Christ. He's knocking. Lord Jesus Christ loves you, right? And God is saying, open that door. Just like this right now, Lord Jesus Christ told these souls, these 10 souls, go. He didn't, have to, he didn't have to preach a sermon. He didn't have to teach anything. He didn't have to tell them who he is. He didn't have... It's the faith of agape. It's the faith of the perfect Messiah. It's the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the faith. It's Lord Jesus Christ, the faith himself saying, go. And right there when we receive the word of God, Lord Jesus Christ, and we're sold out completely that I am yours. Can you say that with me, beloved church family? Lord Jesus Christ, I am yours. Amen. Hallelujah. And look what happened. That validation took place, right? That's that symbol that's on the screen. Validated. And here Lord Jesus Christ says, go show yourself to the priest. So imagine what takes place in one of those souls. You can, you can just imagine all 10 of them if you want. Just think of one, right? However you associate with this, because this is the living word of God. He's alive and he's alive in us. Amen. But imagine God right now speaking to you and me and telling us, that's, the, that's dead and gone. Now go. I pray that we have such an intimacy with God Almighty that we trust in Lord Jesus Christ, for he is the great I am, that we completely repent and say, I'm gone, I'm going, amen? Because we have to remember what took place in what we discussed this past week in John chapter five, right? Lord Jesus Christ said to that soul, get up, amen? Get up, pick up your mat, walk. Look at what the word of God says in that next verse. At once the man was cured. Why? Because of repentance. The glory of God, hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ, the glory, the view and opinion of God rested on his soul. And he knew, I'm no longer going to be like this. Because my God paid the price for me. My God owns me, amen? And the beauty is, is that in that repentance, the validation, the seal, hallelujah, the eternal seal of Holy Spirit took place. And then you could just imagine that guy just getting up. Right? In the same way, can you say that with me? Same way. In the same way, these ten souls heard God say, Go, show yourself to the priest. So they received the word of God. Let there be light. Amen. Remember, Holy Spirit, He's hovering in darkness, right? See, right there, Holy Spirit was hovering on these souls. Why? Because Holy Spirit goes before agape. Amen. So here, Lord Jesus Christ, once again, beloved church family. He's just walking the borders, right? He sees a need. He doesn't examine the need. Immediately he just says, go. Go show yourself. Go show yourself to the ones who outcast you. Amen? Go show yourself to the ones who heap condemnation, who judge you, right? Who insult you, who hurt you. Go show yourself. That you are whole. That you are made well. Amen. Go show yourself that you are healed. Say that with me. Healed in Jesus name. Amen. Go show yourself to the priest. And then it continues on. And this is where it gets very interesting. Praise God. And. Can you say this with me? And. Hallelujah. That's like a big butt. Right? And. As they went. They were cleansed. As they went. They were cleansed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. So here, Holy Spirit's teaching us that when the anointing of Lord Jesus Christ, when Holy Spirit speaks to us and he says, go, when you make up your mind through repentance, say that word with me, repentance. Hallelujah. Repentance. When we repent, when we, when we choose to throw ourselves at the feet of Lord Jesus, when we choose to break ourselves, that I'm not moving, Lord, I'm not moving, Lord, 
until I, I get this all out of me and I don't want none of it because I plead your blood. I'm sorry. I know that I'm forgiven, Lord, but I'm not going to get up off my knees, off my face until you tell me when because I'm no longer going to, to, to walk that same walk. I'm going to walk by faith. Amen. I'm going to walk by you, Lord Jesus Christ, hand in hand. Hallelujah. And I'm never going to let go. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, I'm holding Lord Jesus' hand right now. You ever do that? I love it. You see a lot of kids do that, don't you? When they're walking in the store or something, when they're holding their parents' hand, they like to swing their hand. Amen? <laughs> or or, or, or uh, couples that are dating, right? They just, oh, they just look at each other, right? <laughs> but listen, <laughs> thank you, Father. But listen to the anointing of what Holy Spirit's teaching us. Is that you can actually start going Right? You can actually start going, but don't be distracted that you're not cleansed right away. Oh, come on now, beloved church family. Are we, are, are we, are we preaching right now? Amen? Are we blessing God right now? Are we allowing Holy Spirit to teach us, to flow through us, to overflow, hallelujah, in His holy church, open arms community church? Are we allowing God to do that right now? Right now, amen? You see, we get so distracted that the healing doesn't come but what God is saying, make up your mind. Amen? Because remember, what God says is that if you are double-minded, don't expect anything. Meaning that you say you're going to go, but then you go and, oh, well, it's been a week. I, ain't, I haven't seen any difference. What? No. You stick with it. Amen? In Jesus' name, you stick with it and you say, Father, hallelujah. You, 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 just, you just bless God. Say, Father, I know what you did through Christ, my Lord. And even if you did nothing else, Father, you are worthy to be praised. Lord Jesus Christ, you are Lord, you are Master, you are God, and we just worship you. Holy Spirit, we bless you. All we want is your presence. Can I get an amen? Say this word with me, content. Hallelujah. Right now, Holy Spirit wants to bless many, many hearts, many souls right now with content. Only in Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only way that we can ever be content. Amen? So one of them, when he saw he was healed, look at this. This is one of my favorite pictures right here. One of them. How many out of the ten? One. One of them, when they saw. You can see in this picture, the nine just went, right? Because I'm, I mean, I'm not going to fault. I'm not going to fault the nine. I don't judge anybody. Amen? I, it's, it's my relationship with God, just like you. It's your relationship with God. If you want to judge somebody or, or talk about them, that's between you and God, but I know Holy Spirit has nothing to do with it. Amen? So I'm not faulting the nine, because go show yourself to the priests. That's what Lord Jesus Christ said. Amen? And you can just see they're going, right? But there's this one. Can you say it with me? One. There's this one that he saw he saw the healing take place. And he said, it's, and the word of God says he saw he was healed, but look, look at this. I don't know if you saw that on the screen, but look. As the nine went, you could see this one. The one wasn't focused on where to go now. The one was focused on who is the high priest. Amen? <laughs> right? This one was focused on agape. This one was focused on he spoke. He spoke this blessing over my life. And I'm not going to run away to another priest. I'm going to go. And look what happened. As the others went, this is where this, is where this word of God come being stuck between the rock and a hard place. Because he could have easily went, right? He could have easily went with the nine, right? He could have. But you, you could just feel the heart. I could feel it right now. You could feel Holy Spirit's heart and what he's teaching us. That the intimacy that this one soul had and forever will have is that my Lord Jesus spoke to me. You see, what happened was he completely separated himself 
from identifying with the other nine that at once, at one point, for however many years, however long, shared this one common thing, and it was the leprosy that they identified with. But in this moment of this word from God, when God says that you are validated, he no longer accepted the fact that I'm going to be like the rest and run with them. He said, glory to you, Father God. He, I know with all my heart, he said, you go to your priest, I'm going to go to the one and only high priest. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. We have a great high priest. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I love this picture once again. Because remember, we're going to get back into that. But remember, you can be in a broken state, right? You can be in a broken state and you want to be whole. And there's some of us right now that's just standing on that middle ground. Look, I'm going to throw myself under the bus, okay? You see my picture right there. I don't know if you can see my bun. That's me standing there, right? In my brokenness, I want to be whole, but I'm stuck in the middle Right? I'm stuck in the middle. And what am I standing on? This word is coming up on your screen. Healing. You see, the word of God says that by his stripes, we are healed. It's done. Can I get an amen? It's done. That by the stripes the Lord Jesus Christ took on his body, he doesn't have to go back up on the cross anymore, right? The victory belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ. The victory is God's alone, amen? The victory of his glory is Holy Spirit's anointing in you and in me as a beloved child of God. But notice how, how impactful this, this, this picture is because you could be standing on healing and, be, and, and, and wanting a blessing, wanting something, can actually become your identity. When the identity that Father God wants for all of his beloved children is the great I am, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's continue on. Praise God. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back. Say it with me, come back. Came back. Amen? Praising God in a loud voice. Hallelujah. Listen, if anybody ever teases you or makes fun of you or, 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 or judges you because you're loud about praising Lord Jesus Christ, come on now, say hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Rejoice. Praise God. Because the beauty is, is that when you worship Lord Jesus Christ and you are loud with Lord Jesus Christ, guess what? All of heaven. All of heaven's presence, amen, within you, surrounds you. And Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ says, hallelujah, don't deny him. Hear me? Don't deny him. Hallelujah, be bold, amen. Say it with me, be bold, hallelujah. Praising God in a loud voice. And then he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And, hallelujah, don't you love this, and? He was, say it with me, a Samaritan. He was a foreigner, right? He was a foreigner. Jesus asked, who? Were not all the ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? And beloved church family, I just say this out of agape, amen? That before the rapture takes place, before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, right now, this is, this is where God is at. Where is my church? What? Listen, if you don't think God takes attendance, read this scripture again. If you don't think God looks forward to you coming to your church of worship, house of worship, if you don't have one, welcome home. Open Arms Community Church, we welcome you home with open arms. It's not just a name on the building, amen? It's agape, hallelujah. And all God's beloved children here will welcome you, amen? Find yourself, find yourself a Holy Bible Church, amen? Holy Bible, front to back, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Find yourself a church and get planted and rooted in, amen? Because listen to the heart of Lord Jesus Christ. For God to say, 
Weren't all of you? Weren't all of you cleansed? And he said, where are the other nine? And could you imagine he said this before going to the cross? And yet now, Lord Jesus Christ is in all of glory, all authority, in heaven, at the throne. And I'm telling you right now, because Holy Spirit charged me to speak this. He said, where are, where are they? I did this for them. I, I blessed them. I healed them. I provided for them. But where are they? Beloved, if this is you, please, in the name of Jesus, get back into church. Once again, it doesn't have to be open arms, but just get back into church. This is serious now. And beloved open arms community church family, if you have family or friends that fell away, be bold. Get on them. Tell them, look, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Whether we fight today, whether, whether you leave, whether, enough is enough. We need to get right with God. What are you doing? Right? What are you doing? Why did you fall away? You were once on fire for Lord Jesus Christ. Why did you fall away? Because somebody got you mad? Somebody got you upset? Something? Is that really what you're going to tell Lord Jesus Christ? When you're looking at him face to face? I promise you, 10, 10 out of 10 times, there... No. Well, get right. Amen? Say with me, get right. Amen? So Lord Jesus Christ says, where are there the nine? Has no one returned to give God praise except this foreigner? Can you imagine that? That right now, in heaven, God Almighty is saying, come back. Where are my children? Where are, where are, where are my, my children? Can say this word with me, borderline, amen? This is the borderline right here. Just like we discussed earlier, Tijuana, Mexico, and the United States of America, right? Why did I have so much boldness going back into America? Because I have my papers, amen? Now, I don't know if this is a news flash, but I look Mexican, right? If I didn't have my bun, I'd look Mexican. Maybe to some people even though I have a bun, I don't know. But what separates me from, from what separates me from them detaining me, holding me, and saying, you cannot go back to America, you have to stay here in Mexico. It's my citizenship, amen? Hallelujah, it's my seal. Can I get an amen? It's my seal saying, that's my home. Amen? That's my home. Hallelujah. Say that with me. That's my home. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say it with me, borderline. In the same way as we discussed earlier, you had Samaria and Galilee, right? And you had that border that Lord Jesus Christ was just walking. You see, everything is divinely orchestrated in how God orchestrates every story of the Bible, every footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, Lord Jesus Christ teaches us, and this is how we know through Holy Spirit, we lay down our will and we do the Father's will, amen? So that your life is divinely orchestrated by God, amen? And so that's why he was walking them. Because remember, you, t you talk about the woman at the well, right? She even said, why are you talking to me? I'm a Samaritan, right? You, you don't even have to, you, you don't even, you, you don't even have the right to talk to me because based on the conditions of this prejudice, right? And that's what it was back then. I mean, you want to talk about just prejudice, racism, you know, just, oh, you're a Samaritan? Oh, I'm a Jew. I don't, want to, I, don't want, I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't want to talk to you. And here Lord Jesus Christ is walking that border because he's saying no longer is there going to be division. Can I get an amen? No longer is there going to be division. No longer are you going to keep my God, my Father, in a box. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ is saying, no longer are you going to keep me contained. Because when I'm done doing this work, I will tear the veil in half from top to bottom. And my Holy Spirit will live in every beloved child who would receive me with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Say his name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So remember this broken and whole and that borderline. And the question is, is where do I stand? Right? Where do I stand with God? 
Where do I stand with them right now, right? You see, there's many people that are, are believing for healing. And praise God for that because we witness many miracles here in God's beloved church, right? You carry the miracle. Lord Jesus Christ lives in you. He said you'll do greater works, amen? So start laying hands on people, praying for people, amen? Start with yourself, hallelujah. Get oil, start with yourself. There's some of you right now that's actually doing it, looking for oil. Praise God for that. Holy Spirit is charging you. Take authority. Where do you stand? I say go, get your oil. Are you going to go and get your oil? Or are you going to be like, well, I'll just get it later on. Well, that's where you're at with God. I'm not judging you. But what I'm saying is Holy Spirit's teaching us right now, where are you? Where do you stand? Amen? And it's in this, hallelujah, it's in this anointing when we go in obedience through faith that we listen to what God has to say in orchestrating our every step that we will be bold in our relationship with Lord Jesus Christ and just allow his presence, amen, to shine. Hallelujah. Shine, amen. Say it with me, shine. It's amazing to me that out of all ten, just one went back. It gets gooder and gooder. Say it with me, it just gets gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. I pray you can see this on the screen. If not, don't worry, we'll put up, we'll put up some of the graphics later on today. But you see here the citizen of Galilee, from Galilee, right? The citizen. In this, from this foreigner, right, this foreigner in Samaria. This is what religion wanted to do, right? This is what, this is a great picture right now. This is what religion wanted to do. Don't talk to him, you don't talk to him. You believe that way, you believe that way, and then just hate each other, right? But here's mercy and grace. Hallelujah. Here's Lord Jesus Christ, agape. Agape! Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Here's love uncomprehendable showing up to the scene, Amen. And you could just see Lord Jesus Christ touching this soul's hand. And I love this because he's not just a citizen of Galilee. He's a citizen of heaven. Amen. Yes, I know we're talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. And we all have complete reverence to that. Amen. But let's be correct in how we say this. Yes, Galilee was his hometown. Right? We just discussed that. That was his hometown. He's a Galilean. Right? But... Lord Jesus Christ is the only citizen of heaven that left heaven to come to this foreign land. Amen? And I love this because he is our faith. Can you say that with me? Lord Jesus Christ, you are our faith. Amen? Oh, and it gets gooder and gooder. Hallelujah. Say it with me, agape. It gets gooder and gooder. When you talk about what you see on the screen here, you see the Galilee, you see Samaria, what we just discussed. And this right here is stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? Stuck between a rock and a hard place. And it's in these moments in our life, are we going? Are we going to trust in Lord Jesus Christ? In our faith, his name is Lord Jesus Christ. Are we going to trust in him and rebuke every medical report? right? Rebuke every bad news, right? Rebuke emotion. Can I get an amen? This is the border. This is the borderline, amen? You see, this foreigner, this is what Lord Jesus Christ had to say to this foreigner. He said, rise and go, your faith has made you well, amen? I love this in King James Version says, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. I know there's many of you right now that's thinking about immediately the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years. That all she had to do, she knew in her heart, in the Holy of Holies, because remember, Holy Spirit is hovering. Amen. And she said it. If I could just touch If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I pray in Jesus' name, Father God, this is all you, Holy Spirit, always, that in the name above every Lord Jesus Christ, that every ear right now that's listening, every ear that has ears, 
the Holy Spirit, that you would touch them in such an anointing, in such an anointing, mighty way, Father, that your presence, your fire, hallelujah, your light would shine through them, Father, like never before. Amen. There's no better picture than this of being whole. Amen. There's no better picture of the, than this of being whole. So Lord Jesus Christ was a citizen of heaven as we discussed earlier. Amen, beloved church family. And when we talk about heaven, there is also the opposite. What is that? Many of you beat me to it. There's a hell, right? And what God wanted to show us is that the time Lord Jesus Christ was on this earth, he was walking the border. See, this is the middle place right now. As you're living, breathing, as you're listening to Holy Spirit's message, right? This vapor of life, this is the border. This is the border. But we have a choice to make. Will we become a citizen of heaven? Only through God's perfect sacrifice. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, I love this picture here. Many of you have seen this before. It shows, it, it shows the, it shows where man is and where God is, and it shows the, I, I just say Grand Canyon, right? It shows just that large gap in the middle, and it's just a pit. And here in this picture, in this illustration, you can see that that pit was sin. And before Lord Jesus Christ, there was no way of having a relationship with God. Before Lord Jesus Christ, it was just horrible. And sin dominated. Sin had power. Why? Because God's blood was not shed yet. Lord Jesus Christ hasn't come, right? And now we live in this generation as children of God that our perfect sacrifice, our high priest, the Messiah, Lord Jesus Christ himself, has already came died, conquered. Amen? And he made the way, as you can see in this picture. He made a way. He closed that gap. And he is the one. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. He is the one that can save us from going to hell. He is the one that can save us from being, being broken to being whole in the presence of God Almighty. Agape. We say Holy Spirit in us. Amen? And many of you have seen these kind of pictures where it shows the Lord Jesus Christ, it shows that cross, right? And I'm going to show you, praise God for this, hallelujah. Praise God for this. Holy Spirit showed this before setting up. Many of you have seen that. That here's hell, here's the world, right? And look, before Lord Jesus Christ, this was the pit. And here's God over here. Symbolic of the white, of the purity of God, agape, amen? And Lord Jesus Christ came and he had to because he's the only way. Amen? He's the only way. Say it with me, Lord Jesus Christ, you're the only way. And I love this because it shows you that there's a way. The Holy Spirit wanted to show something different. And I've never done this before, Amen? You can see it on the screen, and you can see the illustration here before you. That yes, the cross is there so that we can have this one and only way. But if you notice, if you're stuck in between a rock and a hard place, right? If you're stuck in between there, the question is, what are you standing on? Are you standing on trust? In your relationship with God Almighty? Are you trusting in Holy Spirit in you? Or are you just focused on the blessings? You see, there's this picture here on the screen, and it, shows, it just shows staying on the straight and narrow. This guy, he's walking through, and he stays, he stays on the straight and narrow, and praise God. But then this next screen shows that borderline. 
And I want you to look at this as a borderline. And sometimes in that borderline, sometimes in that borderline is when we want to fall away. When we choose to be disobedient. When we allow the mistake that we made to define us rather than repenting and asking God for forgiveness. When we allow the hurt that somebody did to us to manifest rather than just forgiving them and just allowing God to be God. Listen, I'm not judging nobody. I've been down those roads. I've been in this borderline area. I've been in this border area right here where I was wondering why nothing is happening but God's saying you're not moving forward. And the only way you can move forward is to repent. Remember, the only way the miracle manifests, the only way the miracle takes place is when we decide, I'm done. God is asking you this morning, are you done with that unforgiveness? Amen? Are you done blaming everybody else and it's never your fault? May I tell you? May I tell you? I'm just going to be so bold to say it. It is. It is. And right now God is asking you, will you break yourself and ask Ask God for forgiveness. Listen, I'm not picking on you. That's what God had to tell me. When it was everybody else's fault, God said, no, it's not. It's yours. Father, I'm so sorry. Father, forgive me that I got so prideful. And I wonder why I was surrounded by all this destruction. And I'm the one creating it. Father, I'm so sorry. And once again, remember, beloved child of God, I'm not going to move. Father, I'm not going to move. I'm going to stay here at your feet. Until you say to me, my beloved child, arise. Arise. Thy faith has made you whole. Amen? So don't be like these other two that you can see on that screen. That's teeter-tottering, right? That's teeter-tottering. You know, playing games with God. No. Say with me, I'm all in. Amen? I'm all in. I pray that this message bless you this morning beloved church family I am so thankful for you guys and your heart of worship unto Lord Jesus Christ is like no other and I encourage you as your beloved brother as your pastor to just keep fighting the good fight yes this world hates us yes there's all these things going on but we have a God who is head over heels in love with us there's no question how much God loves you, how much he loves me. Because his name is Lord Jesus Christ. And I know that when you lift up the name above every name, Holy Spirit's presence in you and me will overtake us, overwhelm us. Will you bless God today and allow him to flow mightily through your life? I just want to say thank you so much once again for blessing our Heavenly Father the way you do and allowing His presence, Holy Spirit in you, to love this world. We have a mighty work to do, and we're not gonna stop in Jesus' name, amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, for the power of your word, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we're thankful that you live in our every breath, in every beloved child who has called out to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father God. Heavenly Father wants us to pray this way, beloved church family, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me of my sins. I repent. I'm sorry. Father God, be one in me. Holy Spirit, bless my every breath. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. And all God's beloved said, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, God bless you guys. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. Hallelujah. It just keeps getting Gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen. So remember, whenever you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, just call out to the name above every name, Lord Jesus Christ. Now remember, when you say that name, Holy Spirit. Say his name, Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit will overwhelm you and overtake you. Amen. And he will bless you with wisdom. And he will expose, he will expose and extinguish every fiery dart of the enemy. I speak that over you. May his grace abound over your life, over your family. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And I just thank God that he's coming back for us soon. See you in the next half an hour, beloved church family. Love you guys. God bless. Mwah.